we are less than one month away from the first customer deliveries of Tesla's electric semi-truck. This is a moment that has been a very long time in the making. From the first unveiling of the semi-concept that was supposed to arrive in 2019, to a very long period of delays and uncertainty to now, just a couple of weeks before these start to arrive for service at a Frito-Lay factory in Modesto, California. The Tesla Semi has a lot to live up to. It is coming with some very impressive specs for an electric semi-truck, notably the 500 miles of range with a full cargo and the capability to recharge 70% of its battery capacity in just 30 minutes, making this the most capable electric semi-truck on the market. The potential for the Tesla Semi is pretty insane. There's the opportunity to reshape the trucking landscape in the United States and maybe even around the world, replacing one of the most polluting vehicles on the road with a sustainable zero emissions alternative, not to mention the long-term impact of fully autonomous driving. And if this truck delivers as expected, then it will create an opportunity for the companies who use them to save an absolute ton of money. It's a win-win situation for Tesla, their customers, and the rest of us who get to enjoy a cleaner environment and safer roads. So let's talk about how the Tesla Semi is going to accomplish that. So what we know for sure is that a limited volume of Tesla semi trucks have been produced at a special manufacturing plant near Tesla's Nevada Gigafactory. It's not clear if that's going to be a long term thing or just a temporary measure. Most people had expected to see the Tesla semi manufactured at the new Texas Gigafactory, which would make the most sense as the company's largest production facility with a more central location. And that will likely be the case in the long run, but given that they're going through a Model Y ramp up and tooling for Cybertruck production next year, while trying to figure out mass production of the 4680 battery cell all at the same time, it's entirely possible that Giga Texas is just a bit too busy right now to really deal with the semi. And speaking of batteries, we know that Tesla has opted to forego the addition of the new 4680 battery cell to the semi design and stick with their tried and true Panasonic made 2170 cell that is mass produced at Giga Nevada. This is something that Elon talked about on Tesla's most recent earnings call. He said that the semi will not use 4680, but assured that it will still deliver the advertised 500 miles of range with the trailer while fully loaded at 82,000 pounds of gross combined weight. That seems to have come as a large surprise to a lot of people who have been watching this story. We had assumed that the new semi would make use of Tesla's latest and greatest battery technology, their 4680 cell. But the manufacturing side of things for the new battery cell has really not been panning out the way that Tesla seemed to have anticipated. They're not flying off the line at super high output. We know that the plan to transition the Model Y production at Giga Texas to 4680 was largely scrapped outright, and it's generally believed that the majority of cells being produced right now are going to be stockpiled for the Cybertruck release in 2023. But what a lot of folks seem to be misunderstanding is that the Semi does not need the 4680 for performance. The 4680 cell and the 2170 are both highly energy dense nickel based chemistries. From the early reports that we've seen from sources like The Limiting Factor, who did a full teardown on an early production 4680, it looks like the two cells have more or less the same volumetric energy density. So the 4680 is about five times the size of a 2170 cell, and it does hold about five times the energy, which is more or less equal. There is still the possibility for Tesla to increase the energy density of the 4680 through upgrades in chemistry and optimizing the construction, but they're not there yet. Regardless of what battery they're packing, the Tesla Semi is on the road as we speak. Several production versions have been spotted testing around the Sparks, Nevada area recently. We've seen Tesla Semis with trailers attached performing some acceleration maneuvers that would be impossible from a conventional transport truck. The Tesla Semi is still being advertised with its 20 second 0 to 60 time while fully loaded at 82,000 pounds of gross combined weight 
and from what we understand, that's about triple the speed of a diesel-powered transport truck. We can also see how smoothly the Tesla gets up to speed. That's because the driver doesn't have to rapidly shift through 18 different gear ratios when accelerating like a conventional truck driver. As far as we know, the Tesla Semi, like all other Tesla vehicles, doesn't have gears at all. The motors go through a fixed gearbox and then straight to the wheels. The updated Semi design has three electric motors. Originally, Tesla advertised the truck with four independent motors, but it's likely that at some point they realized that they were over-engineering the powertrain. Tesla lists this spec as three independent motors on rear axles, which would exclude the front axle, so it's not an all-wheel drive vehicle. So likely very similar to the Tesla Plaid design, we are expecting to see two motors on the back axle driving each side independently, and then one motor on the middle axle driving both sides. Tesla says that gives them less than two kilowatt hours per mile of energy consumption. So at 500 miles of range, that would put the battery pack size at around one megawatt hour or less of capacity about 10 times the energy of a Model S Plaid, and about 13 times the energy of a Model Y. Tesla maintains that up to 70% of that battery capacity can be recharged in just 30 minutes. In order to do this, the Semi needs a very special charging station, a mega charger. So far, we've only seen these at the Tesla Nevada facility and installed at the Frito-Lay plant in Modesto where the Semi will begin service. It's expected that the Lay's factory will get 15 Tesla semis for their initial delivery. The parent company PepsiCo have ordered 100 in total so far, and Tesla has installed four of the new Mega Charger plugs to service those vehicles. Pepsi wants to transition this factory to their first zero emissions facility. What we don't really know is the actual peak charging output for the Mega Charger. At least one megawatt, obviously, but it's likely much more than that at a peak delivery because lithium ion batteries need to charge on a curve, starting with a high wattage and then tapering off to a lower power as the cells approach full capacity. Experts at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and the Charging Interface Initiative met during the summer of 2022 to discuss the adoption of a new industry standard for heavy duty electric vehicles like electric transport trucks, but also electric airplanes and ships as well. The goal is to develop a new high power charging standard for medium and heavy duty vehicles called the Megawatt Charging System or MCS. They are envisioning a target peak output of 3.75 megawatts. Now, that's not to say that Tesla will or have adopted this standard. They've never been very good at that kind of thing, but if the industry standard is going to be 3.75 megawatts, then it's hard to imagine Tesla would be far off that mark. Tesla has calculated that charging a semi with electricity is going to be about 2.5 times cheaper than filling one with diesel fuel. That should reach up to $200,000 in cost savings in just three years of operation. Add to that the fact that there are much fewer moving parts in an electric vehicle and they require significantly less routine maintenance, no oil changes or any of that, so the trucks will spend less time in service and more of their lifetime on the road. We know that Elon has set the goal of reaching a 50,000 truck per year production run rate in 2024, which is ambitious, and it shows that he expects this electric semi to become a popular commodity. If you're looking for an EV and aren't quite ready to make the jump to Tesla, you're going to love today's sponsor, Nu. Nu is NASDAQ listed and the world's leading provider of smart two-wheeled electric vehicles. They have a scooter for every person, but if you want the highest speeds, reaching up to 23.6 miles per hour, and need to ride extra long distances with up to 40.4 miles of range, the new KQI3 Max is perfect for you. It has 30% wider tires, 13% wider deck, and 25% wider handle compared to the competition, making for the most powerful and sturdiest scooter at this price point. I've had my new scooters for over a year now, and I absolutely love them. They're easy to charge, store, transport, and definitely the funnest and most efficient way for me to commute to work every day. 
They currently have amazing Black Friday sales starting and continuing through until December 4th, including 20, 25, and even 30% off their top-selling KQI 2 and 3 scooter line directly on Amazon. So if you'd like to get into the EV market or just want a more enjoyable way to commute around your city, check the link in my description below and shop New's amazing line of electric scooters today. It's very unclear exactly how many Tesla semis have been reserved, but there are a few major orders that we do know about. Obviously, there is PepsiCo with their 100 trucks. They're one of the larger customers, but not the biggest. That goes to Pride Group Enterprises, which is a massive Canadian-based transport and logistics company. They have at least 150 Tesla semis on the books. Walmart Canada has 130, UPS at 125 trucks, and then a bunch of smaller orders. I think as of right now, we can trace about 800 Tesla semi orders, but there are likely a whole lot more than that. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. As for whether or not we see the Tesla Semi going to work delivering Tesla vehicles, I've seen that come up a few times. Like, if the Tesla Semi is so great, then why doesn't Tesla use them? And yes, that's a point, I guess. But the whole point of Tesla building these is to sell them to customers. If it takes a couple of years to realize $200,000 worth of savings over a conventional truck, if Tesla can just sell that truck for $200,000 and get the money now, then that would be much better for their balance sheet. It's still taking a conventional truck off the road, so the net benefit is still there, no matter who is using the product. But if we want to talk about what is next for the Tesla Semi, then it really would make the most sense to see production shift to Giga Texas at some point in the future, and at that point, likely a switch in battery cell to the 4680 just for logistics sake. The semi is being built right now in Sparks, Nevada, where the 2170 cell is also produced, and that's the battery that they're using right now. The cells don't have to go very far, which makes a ton of sense. If they move to Giga Texas, that's where the 4680 will be manufactured, then they would switch to that cell. Again, because it wouldn't have to go very far. They're definitely going to need a proper factory to hit the kind of production numbers that Elon is talking about. Back in the day, Elon had speculated that the Tesla Semi would reach 100,000 units per year of production volume by 2022, and that was assuming that the vehicles launched in 2019. So if we set the timeline ahead by three years, could Tesla go from 50,000 trucks per year in 2024 to 100,000 trucks per year in 2025? Do you think that's possible? Let us know in the comment section below. The Tesla Semi could still be a major flop, or it could be the company's greatest accomplishment yet. Which way will it go? We'll just have to wait and find out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.